I thought that was it, that I would live no more. I could feel the very life drifting away from me. I can only liken the feeling to that feeling one gets when one is asleep and is trapped within the body. But if one's mind is awake, the head begins to pain and you feel a sinking feeling. This was the very same feeling I felt. I began to see darkness shroud around me. These, I guess, must be my final seconds when a bullet ripped straight through my captor's head, splattering his blood all over my face. He fell to the ground, and similar, two more bullets flew past as the other tramps tried to make a dash for it, but they were in no condition to do so, and they too fell to the ground. I imagined I might be next, but no more bullets came. I drew breaths as quickly as I could. My lungs ached as if someone had punched them a million times. I think I lay still for over half an hour as my body caught up with the life that had been deprived of me. In this time, the owner of the bullets to which I owed my life came. Are you all right? She said as she bent down to see me. Yes, I coughed, still gasping for air. It wasn't at first that I registered the great significance of our meeting. It was as if it were normal, but it was far from it. She helped me up, and we made our way back to the red bus I had earlier acquired. What happened here? I said. I'm not sure. I was hoping you might know. All I remember is waking up, I continued. There was a fog. I, I couldn't see anything. Yes, same here, she added. I looked from the hill but could see nothing. It was all covered, but the cities further on seemed untouched. What's your name? she interrupted before I could continue. My name? Uh, it's James. Mine is Jenny, she returned. Where did you learn to shoot like that? I asked. My father taught me when I was a kid. He was a policeman. And the gun? There is an army lorry abandoned up the road. Found the gun and got some other stuff there. Put it in my bag just in case I needed it. We sat talking for hours inside the red bus, as slowly the sun set. We both seemed unaware of what had occurred here, where all the people had gone, why had some of the city been completely wiped out and other areas left untouched? What were the visions and the dreams all about, the white flashes, the strange sensation of feelings? We often occurred throughout the day. Why did those tramps want to kill me? All of these questions and many more eluded us, but by merely being two, we felt more comforted, even without those answers. We drove the bus down the, little, down the road a little, looking for a house we could stay in. We pulled up outside the biggest house on the street. Conveniently, the door was wide open. But so many seemed to be. It led us to believe that whatever panic took place, that we seemed unaware or not part of, people had time to rush outside before they seemed to have disappeared, or, as I was fearing, dissipated. For the charred ground that we walked on, the gravel I first thought because of its noise could well be that of human flesh and bones disintegrated. We walked inside the dark building. Inside the lights were off and not working. Jenny pulled out a torch from her pocket and shone the light in front of us, revealing a long hallway. We both looked at each other before entering and closed the door behind us. Why we did so, I am not quite sure as we both knew that we were likely to be the only two people around, and yet customs and traditions of our life, as once we had lived it before, continued. But for how long these customs would last, I was unsure. For man by his very nature adopts and alters with time. Without this facility, we would still be cavemen. The house was quiet and still. It reminded me of when I was younger, in my youth, I and a friend had entered a dark house that was being demolished. The floors creaked and dust was everywhere. There was no glass in the windows. But it was not the aesthetics that caused the memory to remain. It was the feeling of the emptiness of the house, and yet devoid of human interference. It also seemed more alive than a house lived in. It had a kind of dark character full of mystery and secrets. 
and this feeling was again conjured up as I entered this house. I left Jenny to the downstairs whilst I braved the upstairs. I held tightly onto the banisters as I had no lights to see with, only Jenny had the torch. As I creaked slowly up then, my eyes started to adjust the darkness that surrounded me, to which I was walking blind into. Once again I was left outstretching my arms so not to walk into anything. I walked across the landing into a room that I guess must have been a bedroom. The door was wide open and I could see a bed there, a chair, a table, but no signs of life other than unopened letters and bills, I presumed, having found that the bedroom was empty, I went to the next room. The door was closed. In the glazed window outside, I assumed this to be the bathroom. I slowly opened the door, and it was then that I was greeted with a dark shape scattered on the floor. It took my eyes a few seconds to piece together what the shape once was, and it was then that I was struck with a deadly fright, as that which was in front of me had once been a human body. Now, in its present horrific state, it was left decaying on the floor. <laughs>